Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat video. Today, seeing as you all have really been enjoying the reboot episodes, I thought that we could tackle another big fan favourite in the series, that many, and I mean many of us, want to see return. And it is none other, the host of Anenra, a former cyborg of the Lin Kuei, and former ally to the Sub-Zero, the silver-haired Smoke. Smoke has always been a fan favourite, ever since his first appearance, back in Mortal Kombat 2. From there is where things kind of get a little bit crazy, because in his official debut in MK3, he is forced into the Cyber Initiative, becoming a mere pawn of the Lin Kuei, and then goes on to become a demon cyborg, to then perish during Armageddon, and then later return as a human during the events of MK9, to then die again, and then come back as a demon, and then pseudo return as part of a tribal variation? Holy fuck, give this man a break! But since then, a lot has happened with Mortal Kombat's story in his absence. Like, with the timeline now being reset. But with this knowledge in mind, and this new era being sewn into the Mortal Kombat canon, how exactly does a character like Smoke fit into this time period? Well, in order for us to do that, we must first look at the timeline itself, the concepts that do exist and then draw parallels and ideas that exist in both the old and the new canon that can essentially influence what exactly becomes of smoke during the Great Kung Lao era. Now, just before we do kick off, for those relatively new to the channel and the series as a whole, I want to point out that this is all 100% theoretical. Because currently, as of making this video, Neverrealm are still yet to fully clarify on what's ending from off the map is truly canonical. However, with the Great Kung Lao ending really flourishing with potential, it would on paper be the best option to pick, as it relies on both legacy as well as a previous existing foundation for the next Mortal Kombat installment to be based on. Now, just before we do begin, as always everyone, but if you like what we do here and wish to see more, please don't forget to subscribe as well as tick that bell to stay up to date with all things news and lore related regarding Mortal Kombat 12. And if you like this video and wish to see more, please also don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it really does go a long way here. But anywho, let's jump right into things, shall we? Now, to understand how someone like Smoke could fit into this time period, we must first and foremost talk about his origin and what has become of him in both the old and the new canon, as they are largely two different drastic takes on the same character. Now, Smoke originally made his official debut in Mortal Kombat 2 as a secret character. Thus, he wouldn't actually be playable up until Mortal Kombat 3, where he would take on a drastically different appearance, turning him from man to machine. During the course of this game, he is purged of the Lin Kuei's influence, but due to being seen as a defect, would be cast out by the clan, sheltered and hidden away until he was found by the revenant Noob Cybot, the previous and older brother of Sub-Zero. Seeking to kill his brother, Noob Cybot would take smoke and begin to bend and mesh him to his will, transform his very being into that of a demon. From here, the two together lay siege against the Venu Lin Kuei, seeking to kill Kuai Liang. But the duo would be stopped by the Edenian god, Taven. And during the Battle of Armageddon, Smoke would be purged of his corruption, but it would all be in vain, as he did perish during the Battle of Armageddon. Luckily, the timeline is reset during the events of Mortal Kombat 9, reverting Smoke back to his human form. And during this game in particular, a lot of lore is expanded on with the character, such as Smoke's real name, that being Thomas Verbada, a young man that derives from the Czech Republic. Here, 
we also come to learn of how he obtained his powers. And unlike Bi Han or Kuai Liang, it wasn't anything that he inherited. At a very young age, he would be taken by a cult and offered as a sacrifice to a demon known as an Anenra, a being of smoke and mist. Upon his death, Thomas himself would become a host for the demon, transforming into it, killing the cultists before reverting back to his human form, having forgotten the action that just transpired. So a lot of layers are added to Smoke's origin, and unlike the previous timeline, he's actually not cyberized, so that is a fate he does avoid. During the climax of the game, Smoke is one of the many Earthrealmers that do fall during Sindel's onslaught, later becoming a revenant that would be a general in the midst of Shinnok's invasion. During this siege, when he is confronted by Johnny Cage, Smoke actually refers to himself as a Nenra, possibly meaning that Thomas himself is actually dead. Now canonically, this is the very last time we actually see Smoke in the Mortal Kombat canon, as he is absent during Eleven and only a variation from the Triborg unit. Since then, we've had Kronika arrive, be defeated, and then had the timeline be reset by Fire God Liu Kang. So how exactly could someone like Smoke fit into this new world? Well first, we must acknowledge Smoke's shortcomings as a character, because it will serve as a way to undo those wrongs that have plagued this character. Whilst he has been a fan favourite, he has been horribly underutilised in every game he's ever appeared in. Basically, in short, the potential that has surrounded this character has been squandered for a very long time. And I strongly believe there's a lot to work with here. But truth be told, if we are to take this character and put them in this time period, Thomas doesn't actually work here, as it does largely predate his very existence. But the Anenra, on the other hand, is a completely different conversation. The Anenra demon itself isn't strictly bound to the time and mortality of man. Much like Quan Chi in that sense, they can live for centuries, if not so longer. So Anenra here could work as a way to put a smoke into the game. Now, do I mean that it necessarily becomes its own character? Eh, I, I don't really think that would work. I think that the idea of a Nenra inherently works so much more when there's a host for the demon to cling on to, as it can complement the strong and extravagant moveset with the smoke, mist, and teleportation that the Nenra grants the wielder. In terms of host, is where the real question does arrive here. If we are looking at legacy characters, there's only one individual that I could see maybe fitting into that mold, and that would have to be one of Kenshi's ancestors, as the Nenra demon itself shares a lot of visual similarities to that of possessed Kenshi from Mortal Kombat X, as it could show that there's more than what lies in the blade than what we have previously seen. But if you really want to have Smoke here as a ninja, I think that the best way to approach this is just to introduce a new character under the Smoke mantle. I also think there's a very interesting way to deepen the relationship between the Lin Kuei as well as the Nenra, painting the clan in a far more sinister light. You could have it so that the Lin Kuei is in fact the one responsible for Thomas being sacrificed to the Anenra, knowing full well of what would become of him. Because, if you want to add some more lore to it, you could write it so the Lin Kuei have periodically been sacrificing children to harness the Anenra's power. Why? Well, again, when it comes to deepening that lore and that relationship, you could actually have this be written to be the Lin Kuei's first attempt to create super soldiers. What basically had come before the cyber initiative. 
As we do know, that's their hunger for strength, power, and control does predate what we see in game. Of course, then we could see it all fall apart. As I mean, it's, it's a demon for God's sake. And maybe inspire a very young version of Sector's father for later down the line. Showing where the cycle began and how it inevitably turned out. Because if you think about it, at the very end of it, the Lin Kuei would be successful in having a fully controlled demon. Just this time in the form of a cyborg. Personally, I'm quite a fan about this take on the character, as it does deepen the relationship and obsession the Lin Kuei have with creating the ultimate soldier. Ones that literally transcend the mortality of man. It also adds a layer of tragedy to Smoke as a character, as it seems like he was always fated to become a host to this Nenra. There's a lot of ideas and concepts that I really feel flow and weave in and out of each other very, very well. So Smoke in this new timeline, much like my Scorpion and Sub-Zero video on this topic, would put entirely new people beneath the mantle, but add a layer of depth to the lore and canon that surrounds these titles. It expands the lore of the Inenra, the Cyber Initiative, as well as the horrible fate that was always destined to happen to Smoke. It ties up a lot of interesting ideas, and I personally would love to see a lot of these aspects tapped into. But with that said, everyone, what are your current thoughts on this idea? Would you like to see Smoke return? And if so, in what capacity? Under the Smoke title itself? Maybe as a Nenra, please do comments down below, as I'd love to hear your suggestions. But for now everyone, that has been it for me. So as always, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting, as we all eagerly await for Mortal Kombat 12. Take care everyone, I'll see you all soon.